guys got a backyard I could pass out in. We're back. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ke uh, Kevin's passing out in our backyard, everybody. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. I, not for this. <laughs> Oh, Waited four weeks for that bit. <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> we did it. Over two years. Oh, God, fantastic. Oh no. <laughs> oh, all right. So, um, we're back after a longer hiatus than expected, but we're back nonetheless. Um, it was supposed to be three weeks. It's four now. So we had a month off. Yay. Jeez. <laughs> so hopefully. Not Everyone the remembers. wanting more. Yeah, exactly. First hits free. Um, <laughs> so hopefully everyone remembers every tiny detail that happened four, uh, four weeks ago, because I will not be recapping anything. Bullshit. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll do it. Please. All right. Let's get back into it. I guess. Guess that's why I'm here. I mean, I came here to pass out in somebody's backyard, apparently. So... Apparently. Well, you know, to each their. Hey, we could make a sleepover, Kevin. I'll join you. <laughs> I call Big Spoon. The, rac the, ra the raccoons will come with you too. I want nothing to do with that tent. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear that, Matt? He's judging us. Rude. So we return uh, in a bright morning as the sun begins to peek over with this clear sky and we see an individual in the middle of a town square who begins to set out his wares for the morning and a small first two children come up and sit down and then a few others and he looks over to him and he looks at them all and says as he spreads out his arms with his navy blue and gold trim robe Oh, you're still here. Come back for more of our tale, have you? Well, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. The Fellowship had recently defeated a fell wraith beneath the Gondorian city of Osgiliath. However, this victory was short-lived as the cavern began to crumble and their exit was sealed off. The Fellowship rushed out another tunnel that led into the outskirts of Athelia in the nearby forest. With bells ringing and chiming from within the walls, the Fellowship limped their way back to the city to report what had transpired. First, they visited Isildur's bastion, the garrison within Osgiliath, so that Malvor and Syrian could inform Captain Turgon of the events. Unfortunately, the captain was in no mood, as he was reprimanding his subordinates over the damage to the wall in the North District. With Locke alongside them, Syrian and Malvor gave their account, with no evidence to support their claim. They were removed from the garrison services, becoming private citizens of Gondor yet again. From here, slightly defeated and sore, the Fellowship went to the King's Respite for a much-needed meal and to inform Wynne that they had fulfilled his request to aid Ashlyn. Wynne, grateful for what they had done, provided them with lodging and expressed his thanks as best he could. After conversation and revitalized with a warm meal and a new beverage in Osgiliath known as coffee, the Fellowship then made one final stop. The Fellowship then trekked over to the old house of the King, hoping to find Rador. Here they explained their recent experience and the eerie parallel they found in the mines days earlier to what had transpired just hours earlier beneath Osgiliath. Rador also discussed some of his findings as he has been researching the tomes that the Fellowship brought him. In the conversation, the group noted several things. Mentions of a entity or formless spirit known as the Shadow of the East. Another entity referred to as Mordu, though referenced in much later pages 
seemingly something more younger in this history. And finally, a potential mantra of sorts or something that might have more meaning than it originally may have been heard in a different language, a phrase as Bas ab goth ib gith. Rador urged the Fellowship to tread carefully, as he feared that this group, this cult, may have had, he may have had help from within the walls. That there was no telling who that may have been, and who may be members, and how far their influence may stretch. The next morning, Fig stirred from her slumber and followed a voice she heard pulling her out of the city. Mere moments later, Gondorian soldiers barged into the, into the others' rooms, restraining and dragging them out of the building. They stood accused of terrorism and treason to the kingdom. From there, they were marched away from the square and imprisoned. And that is where we will initially start tonight. Initially? I, uh, I gotta find my voice again. Um, <clears throat> I know. <laughs> Locke, I don't know how they can uh, charge you for treason, considering you're not <laughs> Gondorian. When have they ever needed a reason to charge anyone with anything? Uh, Offense intended. Kind on exactly most just at all times. Believe it or not, this won't be my first time in a prison. I never would have guessed. <laughs> so as we view Syrian, Locke, Malvor, wrists bound by rope behind their backs, their weapons taken from them, and with a guard at each of their shoulder, pushing them on, of a host of roughly 12 Gondorian soldiers, along with Captain Turgon. They are marched through the city streets at early morning in the direction of Isildur's Bastion. As they get marched away, we pull away, and we find ourselves shifting through the streets the other direction as the sun continues to rise and the shadows begin to elongates and grow shorter and people get ready for their, their busy days as markets begin to set up fisher uh, fishers and traders uh, make their way to the wharf and the city begins to come to come to life fig oh no <laughs> you find yourself almost being Pulled down the streets. You follow the stone streets of Osgiliath through the wharf and across the bridge, past the eastern side of the city, and out the gate. In a bit of a daze, you blink, and then suddenly find yourself in a clearing in the forest. In a small pond in front of you with a stream that trickles into it, causing a slight ripple across the water's surface. Birds chirp and sing as you take in your surroundings. The sun's beam pierces the canopy above and illuminates a large rock near the water's edge. What would you like to do? I have no idea. Um, am I, I'm no longer being drawn toward anything? Doesn't appear to be. Just to this clearing. You blink, and you suddenly find yourself here. Um... I am... going to initially start looking around. Is there anything or anybody here? Uh, give me a perception check. Okie dokies. Is it dark? 
It's morning. The okay. sunbeam is illuminating. I, I, I make sure I ask, okay? <laughs> My narration has No, no, meaning. no, I got you. I, I'm just used to ask that now. <laughs> 17. Um, you look around, so you hear the birds, you hear the water, and you feel a gentle breeze that cools you a bit but only for a moment, but there doesn't appear to be anyone nearby. Do I know where I am? Does this space seem familiar at all? It doesn't seem familiar. You gathered it, you're in Athelion. Alright. How the crap did I get here? Um... I am going to kneel by the by the spring or the creek that you okay. mentioned and I'm going to like splash water in my face like a uh, wake up. <laughs> okay. You sit down, you pull your hands together and get a handful of water and you splash it on your face, you rub it around sort of clear and clean your face to an extent. Breathe, you take up another hand and take a drink. Don't wake up. You appear to be within... You appear to have your, your wits about you. Hmm. And there's nothing else, no sort of, like, animal tracks or footprints anything out of the ordinary that would not seem common to see in this ki ki blah, 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 type of woodland? Uh, give me a survival check. Oy vey. <clears throat> <laughs> You're supposed to be good at those, Fig! She has a plus two. <laughs> I, but... Every survival check. <laughs> um, nothing out of the ordinary. Quiet clearing of the pond. The sun, like the little god ray, illuminating, illuminating a small, uh, not small, a large rock near the water's edge. Um, are we, am I? Did I take the benefits of a long rest? Yeah, everybody did. Okay, just making sure. Um, out of pure confusion at that rate, I'm gonna s spend like 15 minutes to just... Oh no, wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna spend 15 minutes, I'm gonna like, just sit down quietly, kind of like, like put my hands together and like sit in a meditative stance and I'm going to I'm just going to meditate and listen and see if I get any sort of atmospheric vibe or otherwise from what's around me of why I'm here. And this is more narratively speaking, like how she would place a hand on a tree and seek some sort of sign and whatnot. All right, so you, you take a moment and close your eyes and check your breath. As you enter a meditative state. I would like everyone else to deafen up, please. <gasps> oh no! I'll give oh, a thumbs no. up on camera when you can come back. Good, good, good. Okay. Good enough. Oh, oh no. I'll take it. Okay. You take a moment and what feels like mere moments to you, but in a meditative state could have been minutes could have been an hour it's hard to tell 
once you really sort of tune out the world. You eventually hear a voice enter the space, familiar to you, though still, as you open your eyes, no figure to place it to, and you notice a gentle music can be heard. Fig, my child, rest now. because much is in motion, and everything from the forests to the harvests may suffer. <laughs> that would be my reaction too. Um, suffer. How? There are forces within Middle-earth that move against much of the light. And they keep to the shadows where our gaze cannot go. Question. Hmm? How is this voice communicating with me? Is it a l like? Do I understand any specific language that's being used, or is this like a sense? Or it is communicating in the language that you understand. Okay. You just understand. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> what do... What do you want from me? It is not a question of want. Is it a, it's not a question of what I want, Fig. It is a question of what do you desire? You have walked these lands, you have treaded this earth. You have done many great deeds in the defense of this world and nature Shut and all living up. things. You don't need to go play with everybody. I don't... I don't understand. I... Your parents did. Parents? Guardians of the forests, things that walked the earth. original parents. Yes, the ones that may not have bore you were the ones that raised you. When they passed on, I welcomed them. said they are guardians? Indeed. Guardians taken spirits. Walking the paths you walked. Shadowing you from beyond the veil. Ah. Oh. which brought my attention to you. The 
Your companions, Fig, have been seized and may be in peril. But rash action is not our ally here. The enemy resides beyond my sight and that of my order. This is a time for pause and assess. Pause. If they are in danger, though, I, I do have to help them. Don't die. Potentially. Many pieces are moving, and it is hard to tell what the outcome may be. Aiding them now may very well endanger them. We might have to let certain events play out. My servant shall aid you, though only for a moment. I require their attention elsewhere. They will speak more and show you the next path. Servant? Who? Who are they and who are you? When you are ready, Fig, I will speak to you again. The voice fades. Do I... Do I feel the parents? Like a presence? You do. Does you sort of look up towards the tree canopy as that voice fades away. You feel that presence, but then you sort of feel another. You look over and you see across the pond a silhouetted figure, maybe 30, 40 feet from you. A ragged and cloaked figure leaning against what appears to be a fairly long walking stick. At an initial glance, you cannot make out any features of the individual. Hmm. How long do I wait? Hard to say. Waiting and patience are perhaps the hardest lesson any one of you can ever learn. I hate waiting. <laughs> there are many that do. But he, in this figure, opens up uh, with his left hand and gestures across uh, the clearing. But take that for example, and you look over and you see a wolf prowling and then stopping and just sitting there perfectly still. The predator practices patience, waiting for their moment to strike. Hmm. <laughs> Not everything can be met with rash action and force of arms. No. I... <clears throat> I see now I've taken on the habits of an old friend. <laughs> Influence are we by those in our life. As he brings his hand back and out in front of him, and a bird immediately comes down, lands on his finger, puts it over towards the walking staff, and it hops up to the top. For you to progress, Fig, I can teach you something. 
but requires deep relaxation in meditation. Do you think you can do this? And, and... Who are you? You are someone different oh. now. <laughs> ah, ye wear my manners. You can call me... Arwindil. 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 If you Arwindil. want to write it down. Uh, A-I-W-E-N-D-I-L. Ah, okay. I'll write that down after. You are a friend. Yes. My lady tells me you're in need of aid, young one, and I am here. But not for long. Much beckons my attention in Middle-earth. Your... Lady. Hmm. Yes. Just gonna look at the wolf. And... I'll take in a deep breath. Out of a sigh. Slowly stand up from where I was sitting, brush off... Um... Whatever dirt... On my pants, and I will, uh... Slowly walk toward the wolf. Okay. And I'll stop in front of it. Um, or am I misunderstanding this? <laughs> am I getting the implication this wolf is the servant the voice was talking about? No. No. This is... You, you believe Awindil is the servant. Yep. I completely did <laughs> misunderstand. Ha ha ha. Never mind. We're gonna redact all that. She's still sitting. <laughs> That's why I was no, like, no, 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 wait no. a second. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. No, Awindil is the servant. What was the last thing he said? Was it his name? He said my... Awindil. Uh... You can call me Al Alwindel. My lady tells me you are in need of aid. Right, but can't, but can't, um... I okay. can't stay long, right. essentially. <clears throat> so then... What now? Well... I'll tell you this. If you succeed... In learning this, you will be able to walk one with nature while in this particular state. Hmm. Garnishing patience and information that would be suitable to you to make informed decisions as opposed to rushing in. You and your friends have stumbled into a nasty nest. Unfortunately, this nest may have claimed my friends as well. I have not heard from them in several decades, and I fear the worst. The answers you and your friends seek may very well reside with them. And that is the path my lady wishes to present in front of you. Now I will get up. <laughs> okay. Brush off, and I'll say... very well, then. If it is her bidding and my my parents are with her, then so be it. I am ready. Very 
good. <laughs> but fun. <laughs> As he picks up the staff and catches it, and then sort of sits down cross-legged with the staff cro uh, across his uh, body. Get comfortable, Fig. Oh. Oh, and be before we begin, I can have a message delivered to your friends, but I am not permitted to directly intervene into the affairs of Osgiliath. Af affairs? Oh, um... Business, uh... Agenda... They... I can't... I can't directly interrupt anything that might be transpiring there. I can, I can nudge, I can deliver messages, but I cannot directly intervene. Are they? What, what? She, I can tell it's morning based on the position of the sun mm -hmm. in the sky. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Are they not sleeping anymore? Is this still the same day? It is the same day, I believe. My lady told you that your friends have been seized and may, oh. be very, may very well be in peril. Right. As a result of the nasty nest that you have stepped in. The nest of wasps and spiders. I see now. Yes, a message would be great. Very well. What would you like to tell them? I am fine and uh Hang in there. I am... I am coming. Very well. As you... As he... As you finish saying that, he looks down at his staff where that same bird still is perched. Well, you heard her. Go tell him. And the bird flutters off. Oh. Now, clear your mind, Fig. This is going to take some time. As you listen to Alwindel's voice, and he begins to guide you in the form of a meditation. It lasts for hours as the sun begins to set, and night comes, and the next morning rises and you go through a series of meditations and visualizations and practices till eventually you envision yourself running through the forests at night across great plains and hills to various lands that you haven't physically been and you feel yourself as if you could actually pull this into your mind at will at times and this whole process takes Weeks. <laughs> but now you are at will to use your night goer ah! virtue. Yay! And I'm going to give a thumbs up and let everyone come back unless you have anything else. Okay. Nope, I just did a thumbs up. I'm good. I could talk to uh, Alwyn. Oh shit. What's his name? Alwyn Deal? Yeah. For hours, so I'm I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so, but we'll refrain from that. <laughs> okay. And let's. Do you want me to deafen? Music. Nope, you're fine. Oh. You will be. You are fine. Technically, I was deafened when Lindsay went hi earlier, so I didn't need to do anything. <laughs> All right. So as we leave. Fig yet again. Again. Bye, Fig. 
come back um, a day or two later, and we find our other three heroes stripped of their weapons, stripped of their armor, stripped of their money, left their tunics and uh, and trousers and boots, if they still had that. That is basically all they have. They find themselves in separate iron bar cells from one another, uh, where there is a basically a bale of hay in one corner, a muddied floor, and a bucket in each one. You can all see each other. There isn't any, like, uh, hard surfaced walls. It's all iron bars, so you can see one another. You can hear the comings and goings on occasion outside of a window sort of eight feet above uh, you, Malvor. Your your cell is against a wall uh, where there's a small window probably about that big. Um, so you get the understanding that you are basically in a basement or sort of underground. You can hear uh, horse hooves and wagons on occasion. It's not a well-busied road. Um, but for the most part, you get the vibe that you are underground. Uh, it is a little damp down here for the three of you. But you've been down here for a few days. You haven't been given... Let's see. You had no visitors as of yet, or anything heard of of what any impending trial or further accusations or even a sentencing up to this point. You've literally been hauled off to here and left alone, other than the occasional guards bringing in food. Scene is yours. Um, are there any guards in the cold hole with us, actively watching over Not us? Not immediately. There is a hallway that leads down uh, to the right where you came from, and it sort of goes back further from where you are. Uh, but there is a wooden door that you came through that gets closed off, and you imagine there's at least one or two guards uh, there on the other side. There isn't anyone immediately in here. Um, okay. So, uh, so, kids, uh... Any thoughts on uh, how to get out of here? My only thought is that they chose to put us into separate cells, and yet I'm still forced to suffer your <laughs> Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a prison if I wasn't around. I don't know what that means, but... The fuck we can do? I got this small window here, but, uh, I have no... I have window in my cell or anything? Sorry, didn't no. mean to question no. bits. No. There, so let, if I will paint a picture for you, if you're looking at it from a top-down perspective, on the right is Malvor's cell, which has several empty cells next to it, like adjacent, but his is against the wall with a window. The two of you are next to each other across the hallway, uh, against the wall, but it's like an interior wall. There's no w windows or anything there. Hmm. All right. So yeah. <coughs> um, Lost will be like, fuck him, or not Lost, Jesus. Syrian will be like, uh, what can we do? We can bide our time, come up with a plan. Seems like the only thing we can do. I'm trying for two days and yet you continue talking. I mean, talking sort of what I do. Believe me, I couldn't forget if I tried. <laughs> the last... Even in my sleep, I escape you. <laughs> the last time, and I think the only other time, if I remember correctly, I was in prison, was, uh... was only because, uh... It, was, it wasn't anything big. It was just I was in there for a night. It was, uh, we got a little rowdy, me and some of the other soldiers, and, uh, a commanding officer thought it would straighten us out. Care straight program. I like it. Well, there 
any remains of rodents, people, etc. in my cell. Give me an investigation check. Thirteen. Uh, there is a dead rat that is sort of burrowed underneath the hay bale that you sort of see its tails uh, slinked out. Snack. Quite. I'm going to pull it out and see what I can do to uh, break a rib out of the corpse. Ooh, I like where this is going. Give me a survival or a medicine check. Uh, both equally bad, so we'll just go survive. Twenty. Oh, I know twenty. Twenty. Not an advantage. Twenty. Sorry, I forgot I had advantage yeah. there, but still. Twenty. Yeah. No, you you grasp around the torso and you sort of bend it, and you the two of you hear some cracking uh, of bones, but you do it in a way where the rib bone pokes through uh, and breaks off and pokes through uh, the actual skin. You can just, with enough force, pull it out. Cool. That's going in my boot for now. All right. You have a rat um, rib bone. I'm going to... Uh, I have improvised thieves tools. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to investigate the wall in my cell and just see if I can notice okay. anything, uh, any, anything of note about it. All right, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Oh! I'm expecting a Shawshank Redemption kind of wall look here. Yeah, total of 27. Uh, you take a look. There is um, a decent amount of <laughs> water, water damage almost coming through the cracks of the wall. Um, so you get the idea this might be a weakened wall. Uh, one of the iron bars on the window is fairly well rusted um, and as you're sort of inspecting that a little bird flies down and sits like right next to it and just sits there oh hey little guy what brings you to this neighborhood it cocks its head and, and chirps at you and it sort of uh dances off to the left out of sight. Oh, you are hard to find. Hello? Hello? Who uh, I believe you're the right ones. I, I, I come bearing a message from, from your friend Fig. Oh. I don't know who you are, but I know who Fig is. Oh, good. If you didn't, then I'd have to keep searching. Um, let's are, see. Are what you was the, her message? Are you the bird? <laughs> hmm? Are you the, are you the bird talking to me? That's a ridiculous question. Uh, let's see. Her message. Um... <laughs> oh yes. I'm. <laughs> you, you just hear. I am. <laughs> so, from everyone else's perspective, Malvo is just looking at the wall and like the bird. The bird's talking to me. The bird's talking to me. There's... He's just like muttering to himself. <laughs> Imagining this perfectly, and I'm dying. <laughs> Malvo's like, how long have I been in here? I'm going nuts. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, her message. Uh, I am fine. Hang in there. I am coming. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, thank you for Honestly, the message. Honestly, she probably could have elaborated a little bit, I but know. that's all she got. I know. Like, that doesn't, like, hang on, like, a day, a week, a, a year? Like, that doesn't tell me anything. I could be dead. Ooh. I'm old. Look at me. What is, what is time? How, Honestly, time? You think you're old. Whoa, whoa. Huh, you think you're old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. How, how old are you, bird? Hmm? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. That's all I have time for. Um, hang in there. Fig's coming eventually, I guess. Uh, yeah. Bye. Okay, strange bird. Goodbye. 
official. He went um, nuts. And I'm not going to tell the others about this because honestly, Malvo just thinks he's having a hallucination. He's lost I'm, it. I'm crying. Um, but what, what Malvo is going to do to actually try and be productive is I'm going to tug on that rusted bar and see if I can like get it loose or get it out. Just give me a, a strength check. It's not my forte, but... Yeah, that's... that's oh, that's a 20! <laughs> oh my gosh! I just needed a it hiatus! Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't... It, it, it doesn't, like, rip out or anything, but it's definitely loose. Like, there is something you could potentially do here. It might just take time. Well, I'm just going to take some time. So what I want to do is I just want to try and wiggle it in place and wiggle it mm -hmm. and wiggle it, essentially widening the hole, holes in the stone that hold it in place. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to keep doing that over time and until the point that I'll be able to get it loose and out. That is my ultimate goal. Okay. Sirian, you doing anything else? Doing a prison workout. So I'm doing, like, right. while... while Malvor, like, I kind of, like, look into Locke's cell while he was talking to him. Just kind of just, like, roll my eyes a little bit. I'm assuming Locke can see me, right? I thought he... Is he across from yeah. me? I thought he said... No, he, he's okay. next to you. Malvor. Oh, next to me. You, but you can all see each other. Okay. Well, then I just do, like, my hands, like, through the bars, like a, I don't know, kind of motion. And I'm just going to go back while he's talking to it. Just go, yep, yep. He finally snapped. And I'm just going to start just busting out some squats while he's talking to the bird and some push-ups uh, get on my hay bed if you want to call it that knock out some sit-ups like a fucking G and we're just going to do that for a couple sets improve Love his strength over Syrian, here in prison Syrian and Locke are taking the exact opposite approaches <laughs> I have the, the extent of anything I have done other than eat piss and shit for three days has been sleep <laughs> <laughs> Minus getting this little rat rib since I noticed it, mostly because at this point I was trying to figure out if I needed to go put Malvor out of his misery in advance. Shank. <laughs> no, 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 not a shank. <laughs> okay. That. I'm also going to be practicing. Can't talk to you anymore. Almost going to be doing like shadow boxing in my cell as well. <laughs> All right. Montage. I'm doing like a karate master. I say, I'm doing like a karate master, like punching the wall, like hardening up my knuckles. <laughs> we got three very different things going on here. I love it. So in the in the process of all this, after a few minutes, you guys do hear a what sounds like a chain and a, a, a sliding latch. I immediately stop messing with the window and I just sit back down on the hay and I I just sort of make myself look disheveled and ill. Which... There's a large squeak as the door opens. And you hear it's uh, a footfall and then a clunk. And the door <laughs> shuts behind. Two footfalls, clunk. Two footfalls, clunk. And eventually is this sort of like this... Comes through. Uh, you see a familiar face with a cane in hand of Rador, who looks over the three of you. Well, I've liked to say I found you in worse states, but circumstances have it. To be fair, I'm pretty sure we found uh, Locke in a worse state once before, at least. Say, you've seen me in worse at least once. I mean, you, oh. you, you know, Rattle, that this is all just bullshit, right? He looks back towards the door he came from. There is a lot going on that I am not privy to. Have they told you anything? What's the purpose of your rest Work. or anything like that? Just We're essentially traitors as I'm doing like I'm uh what's the roof of my cell like? Bar. It's basically a cage. So okay, yeah, I'm can, doing I'm do... doing fucking pull up yeah, I'm doing pull ups <laughs> and talking to them. They said uh ter terrorism and treason. He looks he looks at uh Syrian. 
Traitors to what? Carbs? <laughs> and then I'll just I'll, so I'm gonna hold myself down like like, like I'm, I'm gonna let myself go all the way down so hold on I'm just gonna give him a wink and keep going <laughs> mm. he leans on the cane but the cane sort of like sinks into like the, the muddied floor it took a while for the news of your imprisonment to reach my ears when did they get to you when how long have you been here what day is it uh, um thursday i believe a couple okay. days now a couple of days i'm gonna, and then i'm gonna, i'm gonna, i'm going to transfer over to the wall of my cell and uh, start doing handstand push-ups <laughs> couple of days he sort of looks up and uh, the day, the same day, the same day we came to the talk same day. to you. Mm -hmm. It's way too quick. Interesting. Well, I think technically it was the next morning, but that's true. Well, I think we're on agreement that your situation here is. Unjust? Indeed. And there's not a whole lot of whispers about this situation. It seems to have been, if they're doing this as a result of what happens in the North District, they didn't publicly announce anything of arrests or treason for that matter. They're, they're being very quiet about it. It almost seems like they're trying to brush it away. I mean, it stinks of uh, a conspiracy on the inside, like you said. The failings of men. Yep, as I finished my last set of handstand push-ups. <laughs> if that's the case, then I do not know how long they'll hold you, or if they'll even give you trial. And if they don't give you trial, then they may very well just hang you and be done with it. Sounds about right if I know this kind of establishment. I'm gonna grab the bars again, and I'm gonna <laughs> bring my feet up, hug them into the bars, start doing hanging sit-ups. <laughs> do you plan on bending the bars to get out of here? It's a start, as I'm, like, straining. Ugh. Might as well get well, comfy from the sound of your voice. If you could, it's exhausting. If you could smuggle anything <laughs> at all that would be helpful in. That would be greatly appreciated. We can do the rest. I will see what I can do, what, though I am what, in a. The, just really quick, what might be more helpful to us right now? What's the building look like? Where are we? What's surrounding it? I believe you're adjacent to Isildur's Bastion. Um, it's south of it. It's mostly stone structure. You're in the basement, I assume you gathered, and immediately from here, there's a hallway leading down and then there's the barracks for the guardhouse, an armory, mess hall. It's not a fairly large building because, well, the crown never we... sought a need to imprison orcs. Are we in the bastion or adjacent to it? Adjacent. It is not connected to the bastion. So if we get, if we happened to get out, it would just be city? In theory, yes, if you can get out, you would be right out into the city, but you would be close to the bastion. And then where you go from there... If you do get out... As he shifts back towards the door again, and he gets even quieter... You are planning to escape this. 
know that whatever story they've spun to this point, you will make them true. You'll become an enemy of the state. You'll become traitors, and even then, fugitives. I fear... I'm gonna eyes... jump down from the bar. I fear in the eyes of those who make the decisions, that story is already true. In which case... Very well could be. We Rador, what's the eagles. opinion of us out there right now? Is there any word of what we did public, or is it just for the elite? None. None. There's no word. The general public doesn't know. They know something happened to the Northern Wall. But as far as you this, can, there's, there's no word. You can also spread rumors. And let uh, Manayame know that they have imprisoned Locke. Feel sh she'll be feel very strongly about that. What she can do, I don't know. But if you spread rumors, that might get wheels moving. But it also might get the wheels moving to our hanging. That's the double-edged sword we deal with. I'll present you with this. In my station, I do not know how often I can be seen visiting the three of you until certain elite around here begin to catch wind and I may have a target on my back. That being said, I can do my best, but the one route we can go is, a, is appeal. If any of you carry favor with the throne or someone of station who could potentially bargain on your behalf. Perhaps we can either get the sentence down and reduced, even a freedom, if we will. Or if we do not trust the system entirely, then we can look at alternatives. At which point I will remove myself from the discussion of that because I feel the less I know, the better. The only person I could pull leverage on, I think, is Captain Turgon, but he, he's the one who arrested us. Maybe even Lieutenant Arcarian? That'd be my best bet. But I would say right now our highest link is you, Lord Rador, but I don't want to get you involved in this mess. Not any more than you already are. Who's to say? <sighs> Though Turgon may have arrested you we still do not know if he's pulling strings or if he's being pressured. Could we get him down here and ask God. him why, what the charges, get a little bit more clear picture of what he thinks? You can is, there an try. is there an interrogation or interview room here that we can be... So that way... Well, that way it looks better. So if he's worried about seeing us in person, we can be in an interview room one-on-one, -on -one, us secured some shape or form, and he can come see us without worry of revolt or attack, just a private one-on-one -on -one discussion. I don't know if one exists here, um, though I could have your request sent to Turgon, and it'll be up to him to hear it out or not. Might as well, you two opposed. Pursuing every route is pursuing every route possible is a good idea, although my faith in Turgon is shaken. As is mine. I'm thinking we speak to Lieutenant first if he's willing to speak to us. Maybe he will know. He's been fond of us. And then afterwards, once we talk to him and settle our case, we can send out for Captain Turgon. That might be a solid plan. Rado. How easily can you get a message to the Crown? A few days ride, and then in the process of <coughs> however long it takes them to read it and respond. I do they would have some interest. We may be able to use this as leverage. Considering I just recently before Meeting everyone here, and before we say, do you finish a rather 
vaunted crafting project for. Interesting for for the crown. Indeed. Higher reason that I'm in enough skill yet. The call for artisans to create her horn. Horn. He stops and like thinks for a long moment. And you all get your first little bit of Locke's backstory now. <laughs> I horn. made the crown of God or horn of Gondor, motherfuckers. The horn made from a wild ox from Rune. I thought the Same. hunter Forendil had his hand in that. His hand in it and that he's the one who acquired the raw material. Ah, but lacked the deft hands to forge it into what it is. The court speaks highly of that horn and that it will be an heirloom to lineage far down the line. That may very well carry favor if they wish to hear us out. There's no sense in hiding anything that could be used for leverage. I can very well try. It will take time, and the question I'll pose to the three of you is how long are you willing to wait? In fact, perhaps don't answer that. If I return here with response from the crown and you are not to be found, I will know that it has come too late. I'll, I'll give like a little twist of smirks like, thanks, Lord Rador. But first, I think we need to... Hmm? I'm thinking first we need to at least speak to Lieutenant and then the Captain. I will pass word along to the guard to see if a Kyrian will pay you a visit. Um, Locke, I will carry your message to Minas Tirith. I urge you all to make the necessary preparations you think are best. And if I return here and you are not present, I will hope that you made a decision and it is not that you are hanged by the neck. Thank you. If you flee. Lord Rador. If you flee, I urge you not to draw attention to yourselves. And do not try to reach me, and I will try to find you if I have business that requires your attention. The less communication the better. Very well. I wish the three of you luck. And pray the next time we see each other is on nicer terms. Indeed. indeed. Likewise. And I'm going to go back to doing squats. He turns and limps his way using the cane. <clears throat> out and up the stairs and you hear the door open and then shut behind <coughs> him. Um, I'm going to go back to work on that rusty bar. Alright. I'm going back to work on these pipes. Working on two different pipes. <laughs> Are we right. still the only ones here? There's no guards or anything visible and we would hear that no door guards. before they come back in, right? Yep. Uh, how are the doors shut? A lock? In what we're... It's like an internal key lock. It's not like a padlock or a chain or anything like that. It shuts and closes and locks from the, uh, the outside. Go take a look at that. Okay. I'm going to establish if it's a tumble lock as expected. If it uses a key, it would be, obviously. 
Yeah, if it with the knowledge and expertise of picking locks, you can rightfully identify that when you were brought in here, you saw them with a uh, ring of keys used to to, uh, to lock the three of you, so you know it's a tumbler. Pull out that little uh, rat rib. I just kind of want to get a feel for it. Not to completely unlock it at this point, but... Okay. Sleight of hand? Yeah, in this case, give me sleight of hand. Because you're, you're not trying to actually pick it, you just want to feel what the, the whole thing is. I'm going to go back so to shadow boxing. Feasible. 17! It's a... Th- like a three-pin lock, and it's not exactly a difficult lock, but you do notice with the, the, the give of the bone that that might actually make it more difficult to pick, but it's not exactly impossible. It's not exactly a difficult lock lock. Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, do you say that out loud in the cell? No. Aw. Okay, so I have a decent feel for it. While the rat bone may make it harder, I've at least confirmed that it will work for the intents and purposes that I need it to. Like, I'm guessing I pull it back, it's not cracked or anything, right? No, it's not cracking. It does give at times when you're pushing up on the pins. Um, so so it's a there's a there's... little rat rip. Yeah, there's a concern it could break while actually picking with enough pressure, but we'll see. Okay. The, the rats, the rats got other ribs or other rib bones. Has a spine too. Yeah. Oh God. Need a tension wrench too and everything. Cool. So as you are investigating the lock, lock, uh, and Malvor is working away at the uh, iron bar and. Syrian is working on his guns, swole. I suppose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Syrian uh, is going to be levels of exhaustion by existing. Yeah. Hey, he's going to be a he's conditioned. at arms. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> the day passes and the crickets and the uh, evening birds begin to chirp up as you see the sun disappear from the one window from Malor's cell. <clears throat> and you guys... Take your rest for a bit. Try to get as best to sleep as you can. Hoping that you'll wake up and this will resolve itself. Hoping Rador will carry this message on and perhaps the crown themselves or somebody in court of higher standing will intervene or perhaps a Kyrian will hear you out. But for now, you're still here. And that's where we're gonna take a break. We. I thought for a solid second you were gonna say that's where we're gonna end, and I was like, "Well, that was a session." <laughs> Haha. Nope. We're gonna be right back. For these brief messages. Just.
Fail adventurer, are you a dungeon master with the desire to transport your players to fantastical settings? Perhaps they are deep in the dungeon of a mad lich. <laughs> Fools, you have intervened for the last time. Let's see you survive my fireball. Or perhaps the party has just come across bandits and the Goliath monk releases a flurry of <laughs> blows and a stunning <laughs> strike to gain control of the conflict. Ugh. Nice rolls on the attack. Or maybe the party is taking a breather after another difficult quest. If this sounds like something you want at your next TTRPG session, then head over to BattleBards.com. By subscribing to BattleBards Prime, you get the ability to immerse your players in your campaign. You'll get complete streaming access to the libraries of both BattleBards and Plate Mail games. And whether your game is in person or virtual, you won't be limited as you will have access to a caster and a mixer to be able to broadcast the tracks to all of your players. And of course, if you want to download and keep any tracks, then you get 20% off all in-store purchases. So what are you waiting for, adventurer? A quest posting at the local guild hall? Get over to BattleBards.com and subscribe today, and use the coupon code ADVENTURE at checkout. Stay proficient, adventurers.
Pale adventurer, are you a dungeon master with the desire to transport your players to fantastical settings? Perhaps they are deep in the dungeon of a mad lich. <laughs> Fools, you have intervened for the last time. Let's see you survive my fireball. Or perhaps the party has just come across bandits and the Goliath monk releases a flurry of <laughs> blows and a stunning <laughs> strike to gain control of the conflict. Ugh. Nice rolls on the attack. Or maybe the party is taking a breather after another difficult quest. If this sounds like something you want at your next TTRPG session, then head over to BattleBards.com. By subscribing to BattleBards Prime, you get the ability to immerse your players in your campaign. You'll get complete streaming access to the libraries of both BattleBards and Plate Mail games. And whether your game is in person or virtual, you won't be limited as you will have access to a caster and a mixer to be able to broadcast the tracks to all of your players. And of course, if you want to download and keep any tracks, then you get 20% off all in-store purchases. So what are you waiting for, adventurer? A quest posting at the local guild hall? Get over to BattleBards.com and subscribe today, and use the coupon code ADVENTURE at checkout. Stay proficient, adventurers.
Hail, adventurer. Are you a dungeon master with the desire to transport your players to fantastical settings? Perhaps they are deep in the dungeon of a mad lich. <laughs> Fools, you have intervened for the last time. Let's see you survive my fireball. Or perhaps the party has just come across bandits and the Goliath monk releases a flurry of <laughs> blows and a stunning <laughs> strike to gain control of the conflict. <sighs> Nice rolls on the attack. Or maybe the party is taking a breather after another difficult quest. If this sounds like something you want at your next TTRPG session, then head over to ba Something, something, there's a bear over there. Something, something, something. <laughs> Locks pick. Something, something, something. Lots of that ones. Moving on. Well, I mean, what's all of our cells are open. Could we just make a run for it out the front door? Fight a couple Ooh. guards on our way out? We can take. We could try and find our weapons and equipment first. I am fully of the give left tenant a little bit more time for us to find out where the heck Radware is, personally. How about this? Wait a week? A, w a week? A week. We waited three. Might as well do another. Just like with this entire campaign, what's an extra week? Yeah. Uh, At least a day. Jokes aside. Okay, uh, I mean, I, I think we're missing an opportunity from this bear attack, of, but wait, sure. Wait, hold up. Out of character, really quick, because I've been honestly dazing so I'm I've been in and out let me let me understand this real quick you guys got out of your cells mm -hmm. and you're deciding to wait I mean I, I'm of the same mind I think we should just go and the guards are seemingly distracted you know what? Yeah. Yeah. At the front yeah, you I'm know still what? on the don't make us don't justify the stories about us and trying to buy a little bit more time, but... Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding man, that. So... <laughs> I'm like trying to make sure I'm understanding what's happening now, because... <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to the door at the end of the hallway while Sirius has okay. been fruitlessly working on that wall. That I thought was a great plan. Um, Can I take that bar as an improvised weapon? Sure. Um, Anything can be an improvised weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. Can I, I'm gonna can I bend it like brass knuckles. I'm gonna listen to no, the no, door and uh, see if I can like hear anything on the other side. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh my gosh. Yo. Every time we try to listen to this door, we get natural one. Nothing of any, nothing that catches your ear. Things have definitely seemed to have calmed down and whatever ruckus that might have been initially caused might be on its tail end in the amount of time that you've used during that whole thing. What if I try to open the door? Do you try to open the door? Or are you merely speculating? Should I... Should I try to open this door? My fellow prisoners? Yeah, so we're breaking out. Okay, I'm gonna try to open the door. Yeah, we got a fucking Willy Wonka golden ticket shit here. Let's open the door and get the fuck out. Alright, so you push up against the door. 
uh, actually, you, you pull it towards you initially, and it's opens. Are there any guards outside? Give me a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's not any right on the other side of the door. 16, that's better. You hear far down the hallway the shuffling of, like, mail of someone, like, jogging or so, like, rushing to one side as if the, the chain mail or the plate is just bouncing around, and you see a figure in the way distance cross the path real briefly as they're heading down another hallway. And you just hear the, the echoing bouncing off the walls. Problem is, I don't know how to get out of this building. Have I been to the prison enough to know how, know like the ins and outs of it, and not not the ins of outs, but at least like the entrance exit? I mean, you walk, you were guided through here. You were brought oh, okay. here. You know, you know, you know the rough path. Okay, but then... that was also three weeks ago, so it might be a bit blurry by now. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, I'm just gonna look back at my other two companions. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm just, I'm gonna go. Prison break. We got a prime opportunity. Let's go. I was about to say, like, I was about to go, you're not coming? But, okay. Yeah, so. Um, where would they keep our weapons and equipment? No idea. I have I have my rat spine shiv in my hand now. I got I got my bar. I have my club. wooden I have my wooden shiv. I got a oh, rock. You have to look for him if you really want him. Depends on how much time you think you guys have. But as you gather up and go out of the door that was sort of sectioned off this uh, cell block. You begin to make your way down uh, the hallway, and you hear the echoing of, of metal and, and voices uh, in the distance. Um, and you start heading down a few feet, knowing that you're leaving behind three weeks of hell, uh, hopefully. But whatever's going to be around the next few corners could be a whole new debacle. And whatever that you intend to do from here, whatever might be slowed from a Kyrian's end, there will potentially be repercussions, and the kingdom of Gondor might not initially see it your way. And this is where we're going to end tonight. No! 1030, it'll be fine. We'll pick up next week with a prison break. Cue Benny Hill theme. So Scooby-Doo going in and out, different doors. Out of character, would this have been resolved if we just waited? I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> because that's not fun, because it'll dilute the the choices and decisions you make as players. Exactly. Good call, good call. Now, three wanna... weeks we can ask that question again. I want to keep playing! It's been three weeks! I waited this long to play! It's four weeks. <laughs> Whatever! <laughs> Uh, that's where we'll end tonight. We'll pick up next week. A lot of stuff transpired. And I won't There's leave a us on muted. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. They missed a whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, what I should, uh, so what I'm going to do from now on is I'm also going to run a backup audio recording. <coughs> um, so if, any, if we lose anything for any reason, I'll, I'll always have a backup. It's one that just never mutes, period. Yeah, just one that never mutes, period. Oh, boy. Because it, it, it would all be recorded locally. Honestly, that'll be for hilarious for an end of this campaign uh, outtakes reel. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the part you heard. Um, We'll all be back uh, next Tuesday to continue the campaign, and we will not be taking another four-week hiatus. Not for a while, so. Better not. I want to keep playing! <laughs> I gotta go to bed. What do you want from me? No! Yeah, some of us have to bed. be responsible adults with regular work schedules. I don't want to go to bed and be an adult 
with a regular work schedule. None of oh. us want to do that. Well, then let's not. Lindsay, we all we I would took all have your pain. You're paying my bills. <laughs> we would, as a society, need to collectively ag agree that is the route we are taking. <sighs> and unfortunately, the amount of fear of people going that will never work. They will, then it won't happen. Anyway, good night, everybody. Good night. Stay proficient. Don't mute your streams.